Hey guys, welcome to episode 32 of the 1020 The Racial Shop Talk podcast. Um, it has been a minute. I took my first two weeks off um, since we started this company five years ago. Yeah, this is my my very first vacation, my very first time not working for two weeks. Um, usually I work like seven days a week all the time. And that was good. You got to spend a lot of time with the family over the holidays and uh, and over the new year. And it was really really enjoyable and relaxing and it was good for everybody. Um, good to get kind of rejuvenated as much as we've been pushing here lately. Um, but so I'm back. We're going to be back to a pretty regular schedule of recording. A um, couple things I want to say here. Uh, one, if you've been trying to set up a build call, um, obviously we, we talk a lot about that. Um, there's been a lot of traction there and a lot of people that are interested in it. And um, the problem we're running into now is that there just isn't enough time. So I can only handle so many of those calls um, and still do regular work every day. And so sadly, uh, I can only I only schedule out a month because usually people aren't able to schedule a whole lot further than that and keep up with uh, and remember the calls or whatever, remember the, the time spot. And... Um, and so now we're, at, we're in a position where there's just like the month is full all the time and it's very hard to get a slot. Um, so I might try to add like maybe another call or two a day if I can, you know, round up enough time to do that. But we'll see what the time, we'll see what, we'll see what the timeline looks like. Um, but that's the reason we have this push, like why we keep trying so hard to get more um, of these podcasts and videos and um, out there is just trying to get good information available so it doesn't require sitting down with every single person to help you answer your questions. And we've got some stuff um, in the works right now, um, trying to improve that somewhat. And um, some things that we're going to be working on the website, you know, it's probably going to be a few months before they're ready. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's in the works. Um, we got a bunch of stuff we're going to do to help with that. Um, but I do appreciate all the, all the support and all the guys that are, that are wanting to make good choices with their trucks and choosing to do the, the scheduled calls with us. Um, just know if, if you're trying to and you see that it's going to be weeks or a month before you can get in, um, I do apologize for that. It's just, a, it's, just a, it's just a matter of my time. I just don't have enough of it. So um, a couple things, too, I want to cover. Uh, we've got some really neat projects that have been in the works. Uh, right now, um, we just finished up with uh, Thomas's excursion. Um, there's one of the videos uh, I just posted a couple days ago about going over like all the parts we chose for his truck. It was a like a you know 480 ish horsepower build, uh, you know, T4 kit S364 and a half, uh, I rate competition fuel system, all the supporting mods, and um, we actually ended up using a uh, unlimited diesel 25080s, and it's, it's a pretty cool build. Um, the video about um, the video about like the actual build process. Uh, that one is going to be going up probably next week. And then the week after that will be, we'll get hopefully get the, the video published of the, um, the before dyno results and the after dyno results. We've got um, quite a lot of data from before and after too, that I think is going to be pretty, pretty helpful. Um, so a lot of stuff is in the works and it's all just a matter of kind of trying to spread it out as, as we have time. And it didn't help that I was, that I was gone for a couple weeks there too. Um, those of you who watch this on YouTube, you'll be seeing the, uh, seeing that the, the podcast set here has changed a little bit. I, um, finally got the TV put up in here. Um, we got lighting, I think set up a little bit better. We're still working on that. Um, but right now I've got, uh, um, we're going if, if to, you're, if you're listening to this, that's fine. Um, you can skip ahead a little bit if you want, but I've got some pictures that I'm going to show at first. We just had this last weekend, we had a massive windstorm blow through here. And uh, for like three days, um, well, actually this whole year has been weird. It was like, you know, we'd have uh, t t below 20 below, colder than 20 below for weeks at a time, like a couple weeks at a time. Then it would jump up like into like the 40s for like a week. And then we had this massive windstorm, um, blew, well, snowed a whole bunch. Then we had this massive windstorm where it was like, we were having sustained winds in like the 60, 60 to 70 mile an hour range with, with gusts like at 100, 120 miles an hour for days. And it was like ripping buildings apart, flipping airplanes over, flipping trucks over that were parked in parking lots and on the highway, um, throwing cars off the road. Uh, just, uh, it was, you know, 
it's pretty wild. It was below zero, so blowing that hard, um, and it was it was uh, ambient temp was around negative three, um, negative three to positive three, so around you know around zero to uh, to minus three. Absolutely brutal conditions, and there was about nineteen thousand people um, here, like in Palmer where our shop is, and in Wasilla where where we live, um, without power uh, in that time. And so it's, you know, it's pretty nasty. And so I've got some pictures I'm going to throw up on the screen here behind me. Um, we can take a look at those. And then, um, and then the rest of this show, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover questions that we get asked. So I, I just, I don't even, I didn't look through what all they are. So maybe we'll skip some of them too. Um, but I, I've got, uh, just screenshotted a, a, a bunch of the emails that we've gotten in the last like couple weeks. And I think if I can go through and sort of answer some of the questions on there, it'll help one, have you guys help you guys ask better questions that are going to help get a, an answer easier. And then also hopefully help, help you guys by having a, um, have, having answers to those questions too. So first I'm going to pop open, uh, I'm gonna pop open some pictures here. Um, another thing I want to say if you guys, um, it, probably in like two to three weeks, we're going to have uh, so the, the guys up here, a BG Alaska, they sell like like uh, lube. They sell lube and cleaning and supplies and stuff like that for, for trucks. And I am really excited about that because one of the things that I personally, I, I never know how to answer the questions is when people start asking about like, oh, what's the best oil for you know this? And what's the best transmission fluid? And um, should you run, you know, additive in your fuel? And um, and so I'm, I'm excited to talk to them and, and hopefully get some good answers there. So if you guys have um, questions about lubrication, send us an email to media, M-E-D-I-A, at 1023diesel.com because uh, I think that's going to be a really interesting one and we can learn a lot from it. Um, but let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and pull up these pictures here. Where did I put them? Uh, windstorm. There we go. I'm going to pull up some of these pictures and we can take a look at it. It is just absolutely crazy. Um, so we've got like trucks that are that are totally rolled over. Um, why can't I get through these? Um, this was a this this. ACME, I think they, they sell sheds. The sheds just scattered, uh, scattered across the, the road, just demolished from the wind. It's kind of like a, like a hurricane, only it's not a hurricane. I guess it didn't come off the water. You know, airplanes that are tied down, like small, like, um, like personal aircraft, just absolutely demolished, flipped over in the wind. Um, people's trailers in their driveways, like this one here. Um, people's trailers in their driveways getting uh, blown into their cars, flipped over. Let's see if we can find some more here. Yeah, this is crazy. This guy's door literally blew out of his house. There was a there was a couple like nice restaurants here and stuff too that they just completely like windows just blown windows out of buildings and uh, doors out of buildings. This one's funny. His hood, uh, uh, his hood got ripped off. Um, when we were we were actually in the middle of uh, of building, uh, putting Thomas's excursion together. I was here recording it, and uh, Robert and Thomas were putting his excursion together last Saturday. And that's in the middle of the storm, and I hit my um, my fuel door blew off the car, like got ripped off the car. So there's a bunch of this, like tractor tractor trailers, um, trucks, like pickup trucks, yeah, flipped over from the wind. Um, I'm guessing the wind probably caught the trailer in that case. And, uh, yeah, like right here, there's two, two completely separate incidents. This guy flipped over with his truck and trailer. Then we've got another, like a snow machine trailer down in the ditch, uh, all in the same spot here. Um, got sheds, uh, on like in the road, like people's like garden sheds blown out into the highway. <laughs> uh, this, uh, let's see here, this, this is our, our cars, so like our Safeway. Um, it actually, um, the, the, the ceiling blew out of it, the roof, the, the roof blew off of it, um, which, so it froze inside and then burst pipes and then filled the building with, uh, filled the building with ice. 
So that's cold. Um, <coughs> I don't know what that makes it for wind for like wind chill. Um, this one too. This is uh, this is our KFC here in town. Um, whole side of the building blew off, just gone. Uh, here's another picture of the the Safeway, but just all like towers of ice. The parking lot's just full of water. I don't know where the other picture of the KFC went, but yeah, the whole side of the building just just completely got destroyed, ripped off. It's crazy, wild storm. And then it was calm, so all this week it was, it's been calm. And um, yeah, another semi blown over. It's been calm, and then now just tonight, um, as we're recording, um, it's it's picked up again. It's blowing like fifty or sixty miles an hour again. So pretty nasty. All right, so move on to this. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up some of these questions here and we can kind of go over um, what the answers. I'm just going to read them out for the guys that are listening. If you're watching, you should be able to see it on the screen too. Um, we're going to go over what uh, what these questions are and then some answers. Um, I haven't I haven't pre-read these, so maybe I'll edit some of this if it takes too long to read them. So this one, um, I've got a 95 OBS 7.3. It's a 4x4 manual trans. My dad bought it new. It's got 200,000 miles. Um, I'm ready for upgrades. It's a daily driver ranch truck. Sometimes I pull a 16 to 20 foot gooseneck full of cattle. I'm just, I'm just wanting some improvement on how it runs. I'm working with a shop now that will be installing the parts. The transmission is good and it has a new clutch. Uh, I'm staying with a mechanical fuel pump, which is brand new. I put a Mishimoto radiator in it and it has new hoses, new heater core, new thermostat, um, new fan clutch, U joints, blah, 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 blah. Um, everything is stock. Uh, let's skip ahead here. Um, <coughs> I'll have a new CNC high pressure oil pump too, um, new up pipes, uh, back pressure valve delete, three inch, um, three inch down pipe, four inch exhaust. I have a new air intake. Um, I've decided based on my YouTube search that a 160 zero injector would be the right application. I want to upgrade this. I want to upgrade the stock turbo and I need help choosing between the KC stock plus or their stage one. And I really don't have any aspirations for this truck beyond a stage one level of performance. Um, I might not be, I might or might not eventually get an electric fuel system, but that would probably be about it. I will be getting a PHP hydro with that as well. And I plan to buy injectors and a chip set up from you and the turbo. I just need some advice. Um, oh crap, his name is in there. Sorry. Sorry, dude. I try to get rid of everybody's names. Um, so sorry, I had to zoom in there so nobody could hopefully see that. So this was, this was a good, this was actually a pretty good layout. He told me everything about what he does with his truck. Um, he told me what he has done to it, what his intentions are for it, and that he already has an idea from his research, what he wants to buy. Um, and so then his question is like with injectors, what should the turbo be? The stage one injectors. Now, I've covered this a lot, but it is really, really hard on OBS trucks to beat a AC code injector. It's really hard because the truck, <coughs> and I got to get some water. <coughs> the truck will run exactly like stock without tuning in it. So you have the choice of that all the way to, if you decide to put the supporting mods in it, it'll make like 360, 380 horsepower. So 160 zero AC code, uh, stage one. I mean, it's all different names for the same thing. It's really hard to beat that. Like if you don't actually want more power than that, then that is going to be perfect. And so like, especially for like diagnostic purposes too, like you can just return the truck to stock and it's much easier to diagnose a truck that doesn't have larger injectors in it. Um, and then also being realistic too. So like the other thing is stage one injectors and an OBS, 160 zero injectors and an old body style truck. You're not going to get the most out of them. You're not going to make all the power that like, you're not going to get 160 cc's out of it, out of those injectors on a stock fuel pump. It's not going to happen. And that's okay. You don't have to, you can run them to the point where, where your fuel pressure starts to become an issue and stop there. It's still going to make more power than stock because there's usually some headroom in the stock fuel pump. Um, over what like, the stock 90cc injectors are. Um, in this case, with, with, with stage one injectors on an OBS, uh, whether to go with a stock plus, uh, like KC uh, balance, this, balance assembly essentially, so it's, their, it's basically just a stock turbo with their S300 turbine wheel, 
um, for a stock turbo and then a, a um, compressor wheel and then it has a 360 thrust bearing um, or a stage one. Um, in this case, because he's not going to be upgrading the fuel system either, and it sound, sounds like he's, he's not going to be doing anything other than just like towing with it and he wants a little bit more power, he's replacing the injectors anyway. Um, I would say that you would be fine with a stock plus, um, just the, a balanced assembly and the stock turbo. And the reason is you're not going to hit the threshold where, um, where EGTs are probably going to become a problem. And so you might as well not spend the extra money um, and deal with it being a little bit laggier if you don't have to. He's not going to be pushing it hard enough. He's not going to be putting enough fuel to it for it to be an issue. So, um, yeah, in this case, uh, stock plus should be um, absolutely fine. <coughs> Let me grab some water real quick. I'm choking here. Okay, I'm back. All right, next question here. Um, uh, it says, Happy New Year. Uh, I'm going to be building a 7.3 for my 2001 excursion. I just got uh, my spare, I just got my spare engine stripped all the way down and I'm about two weeks from getting into it and getting it into a machine shop. My question is, it has beautiful PMR rods in it. My current setup is belled up pipes, a KC stage one, 6368, an intake and exhaust, a Hydra. Uh, I'm going to buy 910 Val Springs and Smith Brothers push rods. For reliability, I was thinking of going something in the range of new Alliant AC code injectors. My use is going to be basically a spirited daily driver, uh, maybe light to moderate towing, and rarely at that. With the info I gave you, do you think I should buy some, some old forged rods or just stick with my PMRs? Would this warrant an upgrade to a T500 or Adrenaline H-POP? Um, uh, I would do a I would do a podcast about the build, but might bore people. Oh, buddy, you don't have to worry about boring people. I can I handle that all on my own. So you can just join me in boring people. Um, thanks for a lot for all you've done for the community. Okay, so 2001 excursion. He's rebuilding the engine. It's got PMRs in it. He's already got a KC Stage One turbo, and um, it sounds like then the question is. Uh, does he, does he need a, a high pressure oil pump and should he put forged rods in it if he's rebuilding the engine anyway? Um, yes. If you're rebuilding the engine, put forged rods in it. Don't even play with PMRs because the cost of building an engine is you're going to pay like what, six, $7,000 probably to have an engine rebuilt. I would guess somewhere in that range. And <coughs> spending that kind of money with the risk that, you're putting rods in it that could very easily just pop at any time. Um, and then having to start over again just to save like what $500 probably. I don't know what forge rods cost, but five or $600 does not seem worth it. Not at all. So yeah, if you're, if you're ever rebuilding a seven, three um, and you are staying like below 450 horsepower, um, like you're not going to be doing hundred percent nozzles, then, uh, then definitely put forge rods in it. If it has PMRs right now. Um, the next question with AC code injectors, does it warrant a T500 um, or adrenaline H pop? So should you upgrade your H pop for AC code injectors on a super duty truck or excursion? Uh, the answer to that is uh, if it doesn't maintain ICP. So there's really no way to know if you're going to need a high pressure oil pump, unless you put injectors in the truck and it doesn't maintain pressure the way that you use it. So, like, let's say you never you never put the truck in a race tune. You, you the hottest tune you're going to run is a street tune or a daily tune, and uh, and it, you can go wide open throttle. Watch what ICP is doing. If it maintains, you know, twenty eight hundred to three thousand psi, there's no need for a pump. If you put it in a race tune in that same truck and it and it drops to you know twenty five twenty six hundred, then you would need a pump unless you never run that tune. Then there would be no reason to put a pump in it because the pump is doing what it needs to do. It's it's hitting desired pressure. So um, that's the way to look at it. Now, we do have um, usually the approach that we take. So a lot of people contact us with a stock truck, and they're trying to decide you know, what, what to do next to make power with it. But they don't even know what kind of power they might want to make. And so what I always recommend is like start by putting, putting a chip in it, and again, seeing if that is going to make enough power for what you're looking for. doesn't matter if EGTs get kind of hot. Um, you, you can run a you know, hydro with a hot tune on a stock turbo. Um, just at least see, does this have the power I'm looking for before you decide to put injectors in it? Um, if it, if it does, um, or it's close, but you have ICP issues, you know, you need to pump. 
Um, if it if it does and it's and it's close to the power you want, um, but you you have uh, EGT issues, then we could address that with with a turbo or making sure it doesn't have leaks. But starting with with a monitor, something to read and clear codes, data log, watch data, see what um, what ICP and IPR duty cycle and your oil temp and all that is, uh, EGTs, and, and tuning is a very good place to start. And it's kind of the same thing when you put injectors in it. Like if you're going to replace, like even if you have ICP issues now um, and you know you're going to replace the injectors anyway, like that's already on your list and it's, it's getting done. Um, I would start by just replacing the injectors and see if that fixes the ICP issue. Because as injectors get worn, um, they do start to to bypass oil, They're like they leak oil, and uh, and especially in like higher pulse width tunes, um, it's it's very likely that you won't need a pump with modified injectors, but you would have with stock injectors. <coughs> All right, here's another one. Uh, it says hello. I would really appreciate your help. I have a 2000 Ford Excursion. Um, I'm repairing the engine. Um, I'll tell you the modifications. I have a Colt Cam C852 Stage 2. Uh, the transmission is a 4R100 high performance Ready Goal uh, Choline Power Pack Super Valve Body Shift Kit, Superior Valve Body Shift Kit, um, a GTP38 upgrade with a 6688 uh, compressor wheel and a 4 inch ported housing. So it looks like it's a home modified turbo. Um, it's got a Hydra with jelly belt tuning. Um, I need a recommendation for injectors, turbo H pop and fuel. Thank you. Uh, a question like this. So things like this is where it's like, I can't really answer that question. Um, I can't really give a recommendation because it would, I, I have more things I would need to know. Like, what do you do with a truck? Do you plan on keeping that turbo? Or are you okay with, um, with changing it? Which I, I see here, injectors, turbo H pop, all that's going to be changed. Um, there's really no way to know what kind of power you're going to want to make. Really, all he's telling me is he's got a, a modified transmission and a cam in it and everything else he's planning on changing. So I don't know I don't know what to tell you for that. So with questions like this, like if you don't know what you're looking for, then it's best to just give us a call or again, fill out a build plan or watch our build videos or whatever and hopefully get some answers there. But like with a question like this, I just can't answer it because I, I don't know what you're trying to accomplish with the build. Uh, here's the next one. So my question is, uh, will the Brian Crower rods you guys sell hold up to 650 horsepower or a little more, uh, or a little more trying to find an alternative to Carrillo's? Uh, yeah, I think Brian Crower rods are fantastic. I, I, we don't do like thousand horsepower, seven, three builds. So I couldn't tell you whether, um, I really couldn't tell you whether it's going to be like at what point Brian Crowell rods are not good enough, but 650, that's not going to be a problem for them. All right. Um, I'm, lo I'm looking to purchase a custom tune. I have a 1996 F250 7.3. It's a manual um, four-wheel four drive. I have a wicked wheel in the turbo, an air intake, a four-inch exhaust, and the rest is stock. Um, I would like to get the most economical possible the most economical possible. I drive a I drive two hundred to three hundred highway miles per week, and about uh, eighty stop at about eighty stop and go. I basically drive with an egg on the gas pedal to maximize fuel economy. Um, but I have a feeling with one of your tunes could bring my average up. Do you have any suggestions? Thank you. Um, sorry for the stuttering here. One English is not always everyone's best language, and uh, and I'm dyslexic, so. Reading, reading on camera. This is the best thing I could do here. Um, so yeah, he's got a stock ninety six with a wicked wheel, pretty much. It's a manual trans, and he wants he wants he thinks that tune adding tuning is going to make it um, get better fuel mileage. Uh, we get asked this a lot, and I think a lot of that probably comes from like old marketing. What everyone said for a long time was that you know one to two miles a gallon better fuel economy if you run our tuning or whatever. And sometimes that's true, but it isn't always. There's way too many factors to be able to say for sure adding tuning, anyone's tuning or different tuning is going to get you better fuel mileage. There's just, like, there's no way to know that. So. <coughs> Again, sorry for the coughing. I don't know what's going on with my throat. 
Uh, how, this one. So I was just wondering if I buy a Hydra chip for three forty nine, does it come with um, some little tunes on it? And in the future, if I build my truck more, can I buy the tunes from you guys? Uh, yeah, if you buy a Hydra, um, I, I always recommend if you have a stock truck now, uh, definitely just uh, just run a, a a regular Hydra, the one that's in this case right now, three forty nine. That might change, but a, but a basic Hydra. There's no need to pay for custom tuning on stock injectors. Start with what comes with the Hydra. It's good. Like, they're good tunes. And then if you have a problem uh, with the way the chip, with, with the way the tuning works on your truck, then figure out, okay, is it a truck problem? Is there something I need to address on the truck? Or um, maybe maybe tuning could make sense if, like, you don't like the shift points or something. But there's that's another thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is, like how shifting works. Like most complaints about tuning come from from shifting issues or what people perceive as shifting issues. And like one of the big contributors to that is like if you have a weak high pressure oil pump, um, it will throw your shifting off. So like for us, if you buy tuning from us and you you can't provide a data log showing that it is maintaining ICP, um, then we won't we won't revise. Uh, shifting like or if, if icp is a major problem we will not revise your shift points because as soon as you put a pump in it it's going to be more responsive and make more power at a lower pedal and therefore it's going to shift at a different time shifts are based off of speed and pedal position so if you're lacking power if the high pressure oil pump is not doing what it's supposed to do and therefore the truck is not making the power it's supposed to make or there's many other things too but that's a very common one it's going to take more pedal you're going to have to be like further into the pedal to make the same amount of power um or or not make the power, but you're going to be further in the pedal anyway. Um, and there, you know, it's going to it's going to change your shift points and change your lockup schedule, which you're not going to have the power to like pull through the converter and stuff. So that's really important. All right. So next one uh, says, "Hey guys, I'm looking for a rebuilt four one hundred in converter package, but I wanted to see if you had any uh, in stock and ready to ship. I'm not I'm not too picky on brand, but I do need a four by four. Uh, transmission and uh, something they can hunt comfortably handle 500 horsepower um, with heavy towing. Um, see, things like this, when I see questions like, I need to tow heavy and something that'll handle 500 horsepower, um, that's a really bad combination to try to make 500 horsepower on something you intend to tow with. So I, that's, like, the conversation, like, if you call me and ask that, that's the conversation is going to go down that road. Like, do you have 500 horsepower? If you don't, don't build for that because that's, that's just a terrible idea. Um, yeah, transmissions right now, as of like 2020, 2021, 2022, it's getting worse. <clears throat> uh, you're you're going to see some long wait times for transmissions. Um, all right, next one. I have a 2001 73 excursion four-wheel drive. I'm not sure if it has a lift. Uh, it's currently sitting on 285s, and I have two potential PCM codes, um, but I am not sure which it might be. Could anyone provide some support for purchasing the 1023 tuned chip? Uh, I would guess in a case like this, so this is something that's important. We've got videos on our, uh, or a video on YouTube, and hopefully I'll make a better one here soon, um, showing how to find your PCM code. There's also, if you go to the FAQ page on our website, under the, uh, contact and support, there's an FAQ page. Uh, there's a ton of information on what's important, what codes we're looking for, how to find it. Um, things like that, that uh, it's, we get provided the wrong information frequently enough that I think it's important that, that you try to understand that. So if you have questions about like PCM codes and stuff, definitely check, uh, check those out. All right, next one uh, says, good morning. I have a 2000 Ford F450 cabin chassis, uh, two wheel drive manual. Uh, it has 220,000 miles on it. It has been well taken care of but now the injectors are getting weak and it's not running up to its expectations nowadays. Um, I've been looking at doing your stage 1.5 package uh, as I'm not looking for huge power numbers, but a good running tow rig that will be pulling at most 14,000 pound in, on short distances. Uh, do you recommend a regulated return system? If so, what kit? Also keep in mind my truck has a rear mounted tank and the frame mounted factory fuel pump already. Okay, so... 2000 uh, F450 cabin chassis manual two wheel drive. He's got a bunch of miles on it and he's looking to make more power with it. Um, 
if a truck is a work truck, like if its whole job is is just driving around and towing, if that's all you do with it, then I would never do anything larger than a 30% nozzle because you open yourself up to too many problems. Anybody who's talked to me before, uh, you, you know that I go down that road. Um, the, another thing I'll say is like people looking at packages, this is where like I fight a little bit back and forth on like our power packages and what people offer. Um, it's, there's like there, we could just make a choice and say like, yes, if you buy these injectors, you should always buy this turbo with it or whatever. Um, and say like, if you want to buy a package, this is the only package we offer. Um, but there's a lot of scenarios where things need to have some variance. Um, like if you've already got a turbo in the truck, you're going to replace it later, but you want injectors now. Um, and you also need a, or if you need to do like up pipes and a injectors or up pipes and a turbo at the same time, whatever packages, it's, it gets really convoluted deciding what to offer and what not to offer in a package. Like, what should be configurable? Because um, there's so many options for different parts out there. Um, but I, I will answer the question on the fuel system. Uh, Super Duty trucks, the stock fuel pump will handle, like, I would say up to a 30% nozzle line. So our, our recommendation for 30% nozzle is to run up to, like, 180 cc's. Nothing bigger. It's pointless. Um, the stock fuel pump is fine. There's, there's lots of different options for like regulated return or fuel bull delete or four line feed or fuel wheel crossover, um, whatever. There's lots of stuff out there. Um, but I, I personally think the stock uh, Super Duty like Bosch pump is reliable enough that if it will supply enough fuel for your needs, then I wouldn't change it. They're, they really are reliable. They're easy to find if one fails. You don't have to like order one to get it. I mean, who knows what the future holds, but as of right now, they're, they're very easy to find. And you can you know get them from parts stores or Ford dealer or online, whatever. Um, all you really need to worry about is some of the restrictions on top of the engine. So um, the two things that I frequently recommend on a stage one injector, stage one and a half injector Super Duty truck is uh, either uh, riffraff diesels, fuel rail crossover. That's the cheapest way to address the biggest problem, which is that fuel does not pass through the heads. It just deadheaded it feeds one corner uh, or one end and then just stops at the other um and so the fuel rail crossover will um just get fuel flowing through the heads and get consistent uh, flow and pressure to, to all injectors that's not my first choice though um what, what, what i've really preferred to do lately if you don't have a reason to get rid of the fuel bowl which i think most people should consider not um they should consider keeping it um unless you have a really good reason to get rid of it. So uh, CNC Fab's four-line fuel kit, um, their four-line feed kit that retains the fuel bowl, I think is a fantastic way to go. Uh, for, for most people that are running in like the sub 400 horsepower, sub 450 horsepower range, that's going to be perfect. And that addresses um, the issue of like the passenger side fuel line that tends to crack because it gets replaced. It replaces all of the fuel lines on top of the engine and adds new ones. It doesn't, it's a different approach because it's a four line feed. It doesn't like feed one corner of the heads and then regulate back um, at the regulator on the bowl. It actually just feeds all four corners. It addresses the same issues. Um, but uh, it, it also gives you like, you know, CVD fittings, like your stock CVD fittings are, they're pretty restrictive. Like if you have good filtration, I recommend getting rid of them. Um, so things like that can be important. Um, the other thing with a four line feed kit is, uh, The other thing with a four-line feed kit is uh, if you're in Alaska. The other thing with a four-line feed kit is if you're in Alaska or you're in a cold climate, I think one good reason to do that instead of running like a regulated return that feeds um, to the engine, passes through the heads, and then returns everything that's not used to the tank um, is uh, condensation. Like condensation become a big problem when you're like in sub-zero temperatures and you're feeding a lot of hot, hot fuel back into the tank. So, uh, t you know, taking cold fuel and feeding hot fuel back in the tank, and the tank gets hot, and then it condensates. So I think especially in cold climates, it's a good idea to consider doing a four-line feed. Now, let me go ahead and answer one more, then i got to get out of here. Uh, let's see. So this one says, uh, I'm rebuilding a 2001 7.3 to put into a 19... 
1952 International L120. Uh, I bought the hydro tuner from y'all, but I'm going to be purchasing some injectors also uh, when it's time. My question for you all is who would you recommend as a machine shop for the block and heads in Alaska? Um, if you would not recommend anybody in Alaska, who would you ship it out of state to? Uh, man, I think probably, you know, if you're in Alaska, the best option is going to be, um, like the most accessible option is going to be um, Unleashed Horsepower and Anchorage. I wouldn't, it's hard to say. Like we, we use a, uh, we use a very a small um, guy here that just does work for like a couple diesel shops and he's really good, but he doesn't take any more work. And uh, so for us, it's not who we use. But that's kind of really the only good option that we have up here that I've seen right now. So it's the best thing I can tell you. Sorry, buddy. Um, I'll answer one more here. Uh, I was wondering if 18030 injectors with a KC stage two uh, turbo, uh, what kind of power I can expect with the Cummins Killer Tune? All right, so stage one and a half injectors with any turbo, it, as long as you have a turbo that's going to support them well, um, a 18030 injector is going to make around 400 horsepower, give or take 20. Like some dynos, some trucks are going to say things that are different, but around 400 horsepower. It, it's not, it, yes, changing the turbo matters. Like, you can't, you shouldn't run a stock turbo with a 18030 injector. You're not going to have a, you know, wouldn't be a lot of point in sticking those injectors in it. But ultimately, what's going to make power is fuel. Like, how much fuel are you going to inject? And a 30% nozzle is going to get you around 400 horsepower. I don't recommend that turbo with a 18030, though. Uh, I'll go ahead and answer one more here. Um, I just purchased the 160 injectors, as you guys recommended. I have a 1997 F350 um, 7.3 that's stock. My only modification is a new um, a new downpipe and a straight, straight pipe exhaust all the way back. Uh, what would you recommend for a drop-in turbo with the injectors I just purchased? Are there any upgrade kits needed at a minimum that needs to be done with the injectors and the turbo that you recommend? Um... A drop-in turbo, again, for 160 zeros, uh, I would say, like, the best performance you're going to get uh, is going to be from, like, a KC Stage 1. They're 6370 uh, on an OBS. Um, that's going to give you the most amount of usable power with that injector. Um, again, like we talked about earlier, if you're not going to be pushing it that hard, if you didn't have e-fuel, you weren't going to ever get into that, then, I mean, it, it could make sense to just use a balanced assembly. Like, it will work well. Your usable power cap won't be as high. Your threshold won't be as high, but um, but it will work. Um, and then are there any other um, upgrade kits needed at a minimum that needs to be done with the injectors and the turbo that you recommend? See, this, again, it gets kind of complicated. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for. I mean, this, this is so common. OBS trucks um, that are just doing a mild build. Uh, what all do you need to do with them? It really just comes down to how far do you want to push it. If you have 160 injectors, which I think are great, you don't have to do anything. I mean, you have to make sure that the truck is functioning properly, but you don't have to upgrade anything else in the truck. It can run like stock. Or you can upgrade the fuel system. You can upgrade the H-pop. You can put a turbo and an intercooler, probably a clutch or a transmission in it. And you can have a, you know, a great 380-ish you know, horsepower truck. That's all fine. Um, so it's really a matter of like how far you want to push it. That's, that's really what matters here. All right, I got to get out of here, guys. It is getting super windy, and I got to get home. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Again, we have BG coming in um, a couple weeks from now, two, three weeks from now, to talk about lubricants. And uh, and I would really like to see what kind of questions you guys have for that. Shoot us an email, media at 1023diesel.com. Um, check out our YouTube channel if you're, if you're listening to this. We've got lots of videos that are going up on there too. Make sure to get subscribe, like, leave a comment, share with your feed, with your people. I appreciate it.